one app to replace them all. What's going on, everybody? Ravi Abuvala from Scaling with Systems here to talk to you about ClickUp. So you're thinking of using ClickUp. Maybe you're coming from Trello, Asana, Monday.com, and you wanna know, is it worth it? And then once you get started, you wanna know how to set yourself up for success. And that's exactly what we're gonna cover in this video here. The pros and cons of ClickUp, how to get started from the beginning, why I prefer it after running an eight-figure business on Asana previously, how to set up all of the correct hierarchy and the departments correctly, some of the biggest mistakes that we see, and how to efficiently use it when managing and building a business. And I have worked with over 2,000 business owners in the past three years. I literally speak to hundreds every single week, and one of the number one questions they ask me is, what project management software do I use or which ones do I recommend? And for the longest time, I've used Asana previously. I actually have a link and I'll put it in the description down below of another YouTube video where I covered Asana more in depth as we previously used that. However, I have now grown out of Asana because it doesn't have all of the features and benefits that ClickUp does. And so we've migrated all the way over to ClickUp and I'm gonna show you guys how we've set it up inside of this video here. In addition to that, I've actually met and hung out with one of the founders of ClickUp and a few of their team members. And I can tell you that these guys are absolutely passionate about creating the best project management software in the world and no, I am not being paid by them to do this video. They have no idea I'm doing this video in the first place, but I thought that was kind of a cool addition as far as actually seeing the face behind the brand. To make this video easier to watch, I put some timestamps on the bottom so you can filter to the steps that you want to. And with that being said, let's dive right in. All right, so as you can see on my screen here, we're on the ClickUp website. And one of the main reasons why I actually preferred ClickUp to Asana was simply their payment plans. As we used Asana more and more, it just became a higher and higher monthly expense. Expense. And that's not that Asana is bad and it's not worth it. I still do think it's worth it. But why would I be paying more money for something that I could technically be getting for less through ClickUp? I actually get more through ClickUp than I ever did in Asana. And I was on their free plan for the longest time. Recently, I actually just switched over to their unlimited plan uh, right here, this $5 per month because I needed more storage room. But that being said, most of you watching this video right now could easily get away with just using the free plan of ClickUp. Okay, so I'm not gonna go through the signup process because I wanna be respectful for your time, but this is a brand new account, so this should be exactly what you're looking for as soon as you come on the inside of ClickUp here. And the first thing you need to understand is how to use the hierarchy of ClickUp. And they have a few good videos that explain it, but I don't think anything's gonna be as good as this absolutely incredible diagram that I've drew for you. So the way that ClickUp hierarchy works, the way that you actually use and look at the different stages of ClickUp is similar to a bunch of other project management softwares, but I want to write it out for you here so you understand. So the first is going to be workspace at the very top. That's going to be my main workspace. One of my companies is called Scaling with Systems. So it's going to be the Scaling with Systems workspace. So just imagine that's like your company up top. Then you have spaces underneath that. Now you can use spaces for multiple different things. My recommendation if you're in business would be use spaces for different uh, departments or different overall projects such as YouTube could be a space or content uh, department could be a space or sales could be a space. Then in Inside of each of those spaces, you have folders. Now, folders is just a subsection of that space. So let's say I did YouTube for one of my spaces, then my folder inside of YouTube could be, uh, let's say for example, like video editing progress, right? And then inside of that folder would be the lists or the steps of that video editing process or video editing SOP, right? You could even have, for example, if you did departments, you could have a space is sales department, and then folders would be each of the individual sales reps, and then lists could be the number that they have for that month. So you can break it down however you'd like to do it, but it's important that you understand the difference between workspaces, spaces, folders, and lists. In addition to that, this is one of the biggest recommendations I have for you right in the beginning as you're setting up your ClickUp hierarchy here, is not to go insane with spaces and folders and lists and all that, because just like any project management software, most people don't actually ever use a project management software because they're overwhelmed with there's too much to do and too many features, which I agree with. And they go so crazy and they try to create a hundred different spaces in a hundred different folders. And in reality, if you're running less than a 10 person team, you should have at maximum, in my opinion, four different spaces. And each space should have maybe four different folders inside of it. Because every single new space you have in there is going to increase the complexity of your project management setup and your project management software by like 10 X. So inside of our main ClickUp account, we literally only have four spaces for a multiple eight figure company with over 35 employees. So just take that into account when you're creating 
creating this because if you're not using the software because it's too confusing because you have too many spaces, then what is the point of even having it in the first place? All right. So workspaces, spaces, folders, and lists. And let's dive right back into the actual ClickUp dashboard now. Okay. So now we're back inside the ClickUp dashboard. This is actually the home page of your ClickUp dashboard here. And I went ahead and created some spaces and some folders for you so I can show you what it looks like on the inside. So if we go down to the spaces kind of tab right here, you click the arrow goes down. I've already created a space called YouTube videos. So like I said earlier, I wanted to create one out for you to understand what it looked like. So the YouTube video is our space, you know, scaling with systems is the workspace. YouTube video is a space. Then inside of the space, I have a folder called YouTube standard operating procedures. So now I can add all of my, you know, YouTube team my creative director, my video editors, all that stuff into this ClickUp space. And once they're inside of it, they can look at the different, you know, standard operating procedures. I can tag them in certain ones. I can assign certain ones to other people. And then another cool thing about ClickUp that I really love is that inside of the space, instead of having a separate folder, and once again, that was a drawback, I think, of some of the other softwares, you had to have folders for every single one, you can create just a different list inside the YouTube video space. So it doesn't always have to be space, folder, list. It could go space and list, for example, for us, our YouTube video board is a list inside of the YouTube video space. So you can see here it says research videos needs to be edited. You could add additional ones on here as well that said stuff like needs revisions, whatever else it is. And then you could add a task called, you know, let's say click up tutorial video. Okay. I can even add people as soon as this happened, I could add my creative director and say, Hey, I want to do a click up tutorial video, go do the research on it. And then once we shot the video, I can move it over to the needs to be edited. And I could then assign my video editor in order to do it there. Okay. You can easily add the due dates on the bottom, et cetera, et cetera. Now, another few things that I love about ClickUp and just a few things that I would set up if I was you right off the bat is that as you can see right here, when I'm click looking at these things, which are my YouTube video editing SOPs, I'm looking at the list view, but when I come down here and click on the YouTube board, I'm looking at the board view. And that's because it allows you to click the plus view here and you can set the default view that you want to look at anytime you click on that certain list or that certain folder. So for me, I wanted to have the default view being the board, which is why I did it. But I can make the default view being the calendar, you know, you can make it a timeline, you can make it a box. And then you can even filter out specific views inside of that to make it even more customized. So once again, that's why I really love it. I'm going to leave it as board on here to give you an example. But as you can see, this is the board as soon as I click on it. And this one is the list instead as soon as I click on it. So that kind of stuff keeps you moving faster as you're going through ClickUp. Another few major benefits of ClickUp that I would make sure I'd be using if I was you. Let's go back to the spaces here on the left hand side. And if I click this plus instead of creating a new list or a new folder, I can actually create a new document directly inside of my YouTube videos space. And one of the things that we love to do on ours is just content ideas, right? So instead of having this structured, everything has to have this perfect SOP, I can have this free form idea down here of the different content ideas we have. So click up tutorial, subscribe to Ravi's channel video, whatever else we wanted to. And it doesn't have to have the exact structure of this has to be a list or this has to be a board. So I can have these free flowing ideas down here. I can have the, once I get, uh, write this down here, I could even have whoever is doing my research for me, look at this every single Monday. And then they come in here and make it into a research video idea. So they've done the research for it. And then whoever's editing, it can come up here in the same folder and look at what's the SOP for editing on the standard operating procedures. So come up with a content idea first, then uh, whatever my researcher is comes on the board and does the research and puts it right inside of here. And then whoever the editor is, when I hire one can come look at the SOP in this folder and understand exactly what's the step by step what was required for them to edit that video. And that's all in, it's like a literally a department or a business inside of the YouTube video click up space. Hopefully you guys are following along with me and you guys are enjoying this. A few additional things I want to show you. If I were to come back over to the YouTube standard operating procedure folder and the YouTube video research list, I could actually come to this plus and I, you can start adding custom columns inside of each one of these lists. So for example, if I wanted to come in and click add new, and maybe we wanted to have, let's say, for example, there's a progress one on here. So if I was onboarding a new team member, I could have the progress bar show up right here and I could just name, you know, call it progress. 
and it would show up as people were completing subtasks inside of this SOP. I could see their progress with completing all of the SOP. So I would know whenever I was hiring a new team member, how long it was taking them to go through each of the centerized operating procedures and what their progress was. And even if you wanted to get a little ninja, you could create multiple copy the same SOP center operating procedure multiple times for different employees that you're hiring all for the same job and see who's going through the progress the fastest. And obviously there's dozens of other ones that you can add inside of here. You can add money, you can have ratings. Like for example, if you're trying to rate how well the YouTube video did, I think you get the idea. But once again, this was something that was paid and a lot of the other project management softwares. My final few recommendations in order to make sure you get the most out of ClickUp. Number one is going to be, be aware that the notifications on ClickUp are unbelievable. I don't understand why they do millions of notifications. That is one of the drawbacks I would say of ClickUp. So you can come in here and you can turn off all of these notifications if you'd like to. I don't like notifications for every single thing that goes on in my life. So I would turn all these off if I was you, or at least look at the ones that you need and don't need inside of here, because they will blow up your computer, your phone, your email, whatever else it is, especially if you're running a team with multiple team members on it. As far as actually using ClickUp daily with yourself or your team, as you're coming in here and creating new spaces and new folders and new lists, one of the best things I could recommend is creating a favorite section. So if I were to come down here and say, let's say for me, every single day, I like to look at the content ideas, or maybe I'm doing something and I come up with a content idea randomly, and I don't wanna have to come and click up, type in clickup.com, go and find this specific space, a specific folder, and then the list, and then type it in there. What you actually do is click up here, no pun intended, and click on favorite, and click save to favorites. And if you look in the top bar right here, anytime I'm on a different uh, tab on here, I can just click content ideas, and it's gonna immediately take me over to the content ideas list that I have inside of the YouTube videos. So if you're managing a team or if you're inside of a team, just creating two or three different favorites will help you stay on top of the lists and the things that you need to do day to day instead of getting lot. Like, I don't think I'd ever need to favorite a standard operating procedure. That's more for a reference whenever I'd want to go back and see it. But I would want to favorite maybe the YouTube video board or the content ideas as that's something that I'm looking at daily. Also, when it comes to management, another reason I love ClickUp is you can create dashboards inside of ClickUp. So you can create your own custom dashboard. So if we click dashboards on the left hand side here, and click plus, I can create my own dashboard with my own widgets inside of it. So instead of having to look at the homepage at whatever kind of company decided this is the homepage I need to look at, whatever software it is, you can create your own uh, dashboard with your own widgets, your own tasks, your own priorities, different assignees, all inside of here. So you could just start the day and have everything you need to do right there on that dashboard and you might not ever have to leave that dashboard. So remember, the, all of the different custom features and all the different availability and all that stuff is useless if it's so cumbersome to use the software in the first place that you or your team don't even use it. So one of my recommendations is to use favorites and also to use custom dashboards and only have one custom dashboard that has everything you need to do and maybe even build custom dashboards for your team members so that they can be as efficient as possible while they're going through ClickUp. And finally, if you've been following me for a while, you know I love integrations. I love when my different softwares can talk to each other because that's gonna increase efficiency. And if you come on the bottom left-hand side of the ClickUp dashboard here, you can actually click integrations and then you have integrations. The two main ones that I love are both Slack and Zapier, both right here. So I have different tutorials on Slack and Zapier that I'll link in the description down below where I go incredibly in depth for both of those. But you can actually create tasks inside of Slack whatever, without ever having to leave Slack. So me, as a CEO and as a team leader, I would actually rather not to have to sign into ClickUp every single time I had an idea where I wanted to add a comment. So instead, I like to go into Slack and I have a ClickUp little um, app inside of there and I can just type in new tasks or new ideas and it will immediately import into ClickUp. And then also there's Zapier here. So there's different zaps that you can add with, you know, anytime you get an email, let's say for example, one of the automations we have is whenever we get a new email from a thumbnail uh, editor, then it goes, that we use on Fiverr, then it goes uh, zap to ClickUp underneath this thumbnail needs to be reviewed. So I don't have my creative director just waiting in my inbox, waiting for this Fiverr guy to say, hey, the thumbnail's ready. Instead, I can set up a zap that triggers him in ClickUp and the first thing he looks up tomorrow morning in his custom dashboard is, hey, you need to review and revise this thumbnail if it's ready to go for the YouTube video. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen, a comprehensive walkthrough of ClickUp and how we use it inside of our business. Of course, there are dozens of things that I left out because ClickUp has insane amount of features and I haven't even discovered all of them myself. 
And I'll just warn you, like I've said multiple times in this video, if you find yourself way too overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that ClickUp can do, then you're probably trying to do too much with it. So you should start with literally just one space, one folder, maybe a few lists, and don't even add your team yet. Get to know it a little bit better. And then over time, you'll be able to add custom features and functionality that can help increase the efficiency of you and your workspace. Both in the link in the description down below and on your screen right now, you should see some additional videos, including my Zapier walkthrough, my Slack walkthrough and also my Asana tutorial video so you can compare click up to Asana and decide which one is best for you I'll see you guys in the next video